let's delve into this case thoroughly, including everything we've observed so far. We're examining two spot images from a contrast enema examination, primarily showing the rectum and colon in single contrast. Notably, the contrast medium does not progress beyond the mid-transverse colon, suggesting a complete obstruction at this point, a critical observation that pinpoints the potential location of the blockage. Furthermore, there are at least two additional strictures within the visualized bowel and a large irregular filling defect in the lower transverse colon. These findings are significant, pointing towards possible neoplastic or inflammatory processes. In addition to these, there are widespread sclerotic bony lesions throughout the pelvis, which strongly suggests metastatic disease, a classic sign often seen in cases involving secondary cancer spread. Considering these findings, it's crucial to evaluate the possibility of synchronous colorectal malignancies or metastases originating from another primary source. The simultaneous presentation of colonic and bony lesions is indicative of metastases, potentially from a primary tumor in the colorectal region, breast, or prostate. This is a critical aspect to discuss with the referring clinicians, especially if this is a new presentation. Reviewing any available previous imaging or clinical records can provide essential context guiding the next steps, such as a CT scan for further investigation. Thus, what we're observing could very well relate to an adult female with a history of breast cancer, now potentially presenting with colorectal and sclerotic bone metastases. The imaging findings are consistent with this scenario, necessitating a thorough evaluation. Let's discuss the implications and differential diagnoses further. When encountering strictures on a contrast enema, it's essential to consider a broad range of differential diagnoses, including neoplastic, inflammatory, or infectious processes. Neoplastic processes can be primary, such as the classical apple core lesion typical of annular carcinoma, or secondary, as seen in metastatic diseases. Synchronous lesions are more frequently associated with predisposing conditions like familial polyposis or inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, which heighten the risk of multiple lesions. Inflammatory or infective processes often present differently from neoplastic ones, with smoother, more tapered appearances. IBD should be considered, especially if long segments of the colon are affected, which is less common in malignancy. It's crucial to differentiate between conditions like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease as their distribution patterns vary. Such distinctions are vital for accurate diagnosis. Moreover, we shouldn't overlook the role of extrinsic processes like pancreatitis or endometriosis, which can also lead to bowel strictures. Ancillary findings such as bone metastases or changes due to previous radiotherapy can provide additional diagnostic clues. For instance, a history of nephrectomy could indicate renal cell carcinoma, while the presence of brachytherapy pellets might suggest a prostate carcinoma. Pancreatic calcification, pointing to chronic pancreatitis, is another critical finding. To sum up, this case highlights the importance of a meticulous, methodical approach to diagnosis, integrating detailed imaging observations with the broader clinical context. It's a complex scenario, but by carefully considering all the information, we can aim for a more precise and accurate diagnosis. For everyone following along with Radiology Made Easy, I trust this detailed exploration of the case has been both educational and insightful. Each case is an opportunity to learn something new and underscores the value of thorough, careful analysis in the field of radiology.